let's say we're given the molecular formula C3H8O, and we're asked to draw a Lewis dot structure. So on the left here is one possible Lewis dot structure that you can draw that has that molecular formula. There are three carbons, one, two, three. There's one oxygen right here. And if you count up the hydrogens, you will get eight. And this Lewis dot structure, let me go ahead and write that. This is a Lewis dot structure here. This one shows all of the bonds, right? So all of the bonds are drawn in. But it takes a lot of time to draw in all of the bonds, and so we could represent this molecule in different ways. We could condense this Lewis structure a little bit, so this is equal to the structure I'm, I'm about to draw, and we'll focus in on the carbon that I just circled there in red. So that carbon is this one right here. That carbon is bonded to an OH, so we could say this is an OH right here, put in lone pairs of electrons on the oxygen. And that carbon is also bonded to this hydrogen. So let me draw on that hydrogen. On the right side, that carbon in red is bonded to this carbon in magenta. And the carbon in magenta is bonded to three other hydrogens. So we could represent that as a CH3. So I could write CH3 here. And the carbon in red is this one. And the carbon in magenta is this one. On the left side, the carbon in red is bonded to another carbon in blue, and the carbon in blue is bonded to three hydrogens. So there's another CH3 on the left side. So let me draw that in. So we have a CH3 on the left, and the carbon in blue is directly bonded to the carbon in red. So this is called a partially condensed structure. So this is a partially condensed partially condensed structure. We haven't shown all of the bonds here, but this structure has the same information as the Lewis structure on the left. It's the same molecule, it's just a different way to represent that molecule. We could keep going. We could go for a fully condensed structure. So let's do that. Focus in on the carbon in red. So this one right here. So let me draw in that carbon over here. So that's that carbon. That carbon is bonded to two CH3 groups. There's a CH3 group on the right, so there's the CH3 group on the right, and there's a CH3 group on the left. So I could write CH3, CH3, and then I could write a two here, which indicates there are two CH3 groups bonded to, directly bonded to the carbon in red. What else is bonded to the carbon in red? There's a hydrogen, so I'll put that in. So carbon is bonded to a hydrogen. The carbon is also bonded to an OH. So I will write in here an OH. This is the fully condensed version. So this is completely condensed. And notice there are no bonds shown, right? There are no bonds drawn in here. You have to infer, you have to infer the bonding from the condensed. All right, let's start with the condensed and go all the way to a Lewis structure. So we'll start with a condensed and then we'll go to partially condensed structure and then we'll go to a full Lewis structure just to get some more practice here. So I'll draw in a condensed one. So we have CH3, 3 and then COCH3. All right, let's turn that into a partially condensed structure. So this carbon in red right here, we're gonna start with that carbon. So I'll start drawing in that carbon right here. What is bonded to that carbon? Well, we have CH3 groups and we have three of them. So there are three CH3 groups directly bonded to that carbon. So let me draw them in. So here's one CH3 group. Here is another CH3 group. And then finally, here's the third CH3 group. So this carbon in red over here is this carbon. The carbon in red is also bonded to an oxygen. All right, so we need to draw in an oxygen next. So now we have our oxygen. Notice the carbon in red now has an octet of electrons around it. The oxygen is bonded to another CH3 group. So the oxygen is bonded to another CH3. Let's draw that in. So we have our CH3. And since we're doing a partially condensed, I won't draw on those bonds. We have CH3 like that. I could put in my lone pairs of electrons on the oxygen to give the oxygen an octet of electrons. And now we have our partially condensed structure. If we want to expand it even more and draw the full Lewis structure, 
Again, we start with the carbon in red. So here's the carbon in red, and that carbon is bonded to another carbon, and this carbon is bonded to three hydrogens. So I draw on those three hydrogens. So this CH3 group that I just drew, right, is this one. All right, next we have a CH3 group on the left side. So I need to draw in a CH3 on the left. Hopefully I have enough room to do that. I'll squeeze it in here so we have our hydrogens and that's our second CH3 group. So let me circle it in, in green here. So here's a CH3. And then finally, we have, we have uh, let me make this blue down here. We have another CH3 group. So I'll draw that one in. So we have another CH3. We'll make room for all these hydrogens here. And that's the one in blue. So we're drawing out all of the bonds now in our full Lewis structure. Next, we have an oxygen. So we have an oxygen right in here with two lone pairs of electrons on the oxygen. The oxygen is bonded to another CH3. So let me, let me, uh, let me pick a color here for that one. So we have another CH3 on the right. And let's draw it in. There's a carbon with three bonds to hydrogen. So that's our last CH3 group. So let me circle it. This one right here is this one. So that's an important skill, being able to go from a condensed to a partially condensed to a full Lewis dot structure and also going the opposite direction, going from Lewis to partially condensed and finally to condensed. And usually you'll only see these used for small molecules, right? It's obviously, it's obviously easy to work with when you have small molecules. When you have large molecules, this doesn't work very well and you'll see almost exclusively bond line structures used to represent larger organic molecules. And we'll look at those in the next video.